But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past I'm dwelling on the thoughts I cannot say to you If I don't say the words that maybe it's not true Good evening, welcome to Fantasy Matters with me, Steve Ray. It's Thursday night, which means I'm joined by Malcolm McDonald and John Gibson. We're taking your questions on Newcastle United. And as it is Thursday, we will park the weekend's match now. We don't need to dwell on that defeat. Uh, we're going to concentrate and essentially at the positive. And it's a great day because, Malcolm, Newcastle United are officially safe. Yes, I think we've felt safe for, um, for a couple of weeks now, but... Uh... It's nice to get the official word, I have to say. And, uh, and, and it'll be a huge weight off the, off the players' shoulders um, in terms of, of what, what I hope we're going to um, see on Monday night. You know, that they'll go out with a... They can have a more relaxed air about them and, 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 and without the pressure of relegation, get out there and go and play and give, it, give us a right good show. Yeah, John, I mean, you know, safety achieved. I mean, we'll go back to those um, festive days in December. <laughs> we were looking at the league table. We're looking at the games ahead, you know, dwelling to look at the back end of the season, seeing Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, Burnley, of course, were yeah. our relegation yeah. rivals and thinking this isn't going to mm-hmm. bode well. And we all said we're doomed. Well, we, we thought the last game of the season, the team that loses it is down if we're not down already and i remember way back in november at the end of november uh going down to london to the emirates for the first game because uh i've got one of my daughters down in london and i was going to the match with my grandson and um uh and we lost two nil i think it was eddie howe's first real game in the in the dugout uh it was a heck of a weekend because if you remember we had this the big storm was that weekend as well where all the fans had trouble getting down and getting back and honestly the way we played that day even with uh, the new manager in but the the window transfer window hadn't opened we were one game off our first win the season when we went down to arsenal we hadn't had a win it was our 13th game without a win and that became our 14th i think and uh, they, we beat Burnley after that, but we didn't look to have a hope in hell. And history told us we hadn't, because mm. no side with a start we had had ever stayed up. And we haven't just stayed up in the way that either Burnley or Leeds will, because one of them will go and one of them will stay up. We haven't stayed up by the skin of our teeth. We've stayed up very comfortably. I mean, just before we played Liverpool, and we knew we were going to lose to Liverpool and Man City, but just before we played Liverpool, we're ninth top. We were safe. We, we weren't mathematically safe, but we weren't going to drop from ninth top into the bottom three in a matter of weeks and go down. Now, that turnaround has been nothing short of absolutely staggering and the one well, thing yes in particular to... john if you don't mind me interrupting the fact that newcastle was second on points only to liverpool when they when they played liverpool yes yes yeah there were man city's got more since obviously. yeah but, but from from the beginning yeah, of this year time, yeah newcastle it, had as had more points than anybody other than liverpool which is incredible. why because we've done so sensationally well you know you can say well we can show both we've got nothing to play for in the last two matches although i would like it to do it malcolm's way we'll just play with the freedom that they can and get results what i want to see tricky games home to arsenal a lot will depend on what happens tonight whether arsenal are already in the championship mm-hmm. when they yeah. here or not and we hope they are that the beat Spurs and already in the Champions League because then they've got nothing to play for and that increases our chances. But because this season has seen such a wonderful rise for us, we do not want it to end with four defeats, which yes. is why we've got to get something out of Burnley and out of Arsenal. Because it, yes, would still be safe. It wouldn't make that much difference in terms of 
league position or whatever, whatever. But we don't want this season to end on four defeats. One, two at the moment. Theoretically, it could happen if Arsenal need to beat us for the Champions League and if Burnley need to beat us to stay up. But I don't want it to happen that way. I don't think it will. But let's safeguard against that and end on a bit of a high. Who do the lads think will go down, says Mike Stewart. Um, Malcolm, it looks like Leeds, doesn't it, at this moment in time? But, I mean, there still might be another twist or turn yet, Mal. Yes, there could always be a, a, a twist or a turn. Um, I, I, in all honesty, I, th I think that they made an absolute uh, horrendous mistake in changing their manager so late uh, in the season with just such a few games left that uh, confusion is going to reign more than uh, more than them understanding whatever tactic changes that he wants to make. Um, and and I, and I watched uh, I watched the Leeds game uh, two or three days ago. And um, uh, sorry, last night, wasn't it? Um, and Le Leeds looked disorganized. They were looking around. They didn't know who was supposed to be where and, and, and what have you. And, and uh, and I, th I thought it, they just made it so easy for Chelsea and, uh, and they were quite ragbaggish. So uh, Burnley, you see, again, they changed managers, but they did it at a sensible time where the fella um, was going to be able to, to make some changes um, in, in whatever way he wanted. And, and he had a few games to, to, to turn that around and make it work for him, which he's done. And, um, so personally, I think Leeds will go down because I think they're looking dreadfully disorganised. John, are you in agreement? Yeah, I think I, I think I basically am. But if we have to put Burnley down on the last day, so be it. Odd, odd cheddar, as they say. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, <laughs> I must say that I do. It must be horrendous, not that we're sympathetic particularly, I mean, but it must be horrendous for the Leeds fans. It must... How long did they wait to come back into the Premier League? 20 years or mm. something? I mean, you know, they were down in the dumps of the, th of the third tier, as Sunderland were. Um, and then they clawed their way back up, had a tremendous first season last season in the Premier League. And then if suddenly the second season syndrome kicked in and big time. And to be truthful, the guy that comes in is almost more suicidal than um, than uh, Bielsa was. Yeah, he's so now well, yeah. he's now calling on uh, Mother Teresa, General Costa, and um, yeah. little big on. I think to, to keep him up. It's absolutely incredible. Isn't it? I mean, uh, I wish I'd thought of that in my time. Like right? you know, I never thought of him recruiting three. You, who needs Trippier, Bruno, and Burn if you can have Mother Teresa and uh, General Custer and whatever. It's, it's amazing, but um, it might work for them, but I'd be very surprised if it does. I think they're in massive, massive trouble. Okay, yeah. next question. Mark Bias says, question for Malcolm. VAR was around in your day. Would you have had more goals to your name due to wrongly being flagged offside at the time or less goals to your name due to the opposite? Well, I, I, I would have had more. I'm pretty sure of that. And the reason for it is that um, that I used to get my timing perfectly right um, to go beyond centre halves, but by the time the linesman sort of looked at the ball, then looked at the line, I was gone five yards because I was that quick, and um, and so they put the flag up, and there was one guy from uh, one linesman from Middlesbrough. Dear me. He was the most slow guy, and he'd watch the ball go like that. And I would go from, you know, when it was kicked, because we ha I, I have people um, back there who could knock some great long diagonal balls um, into the spaces behind the centre halves. And, and they'd, they'd then look across the line long after the ball had been played. And, uh, and I got caught time and time and time again offside when i when i hadn't been offside at all and in the end i was having to sort of go into quite a false position and it gave me sort of a few onside yards um, bef bef uh, um once the ball had been played 
and and hopefully that uh, the linesman would look fairly sharpish and see that I was on side. It, it so I think that I would have scored maybe. Oh, let's see. What, what would I reckon? I reckon I would have got about another thirty goals over my career. Probably. Interesting that. Interesting. I mean, it, it's uh, you know great question as well. Thank you. Yes, for although that. I have to say, I don't like VAR. Yeah, no, no it I wouldn't have got me more goals, but I, I really don't like it. Or, or maybe I, maybe I, I'm, I'm not expressing myself properly. I don't like the way that people are misusing it. Yeah, let me put it yeah. that way. I think it might be a very good thing for football, but the way that it, it's being used or, or, or misused, in fact, uh, and. Uh, the official, the officialdom of football really need to get their socks pulled up and uh, and work out how they can use it for the very, very, for the very. Okay, best. Roger S. We'll come to you, John, on this one first. Mm. Uh, what's what's the lads' thoughts on Almiron? He says one goal, mm. zero assists in forty games. I'd expect those stats from Dubravka, says Roger. John. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, Alisson did have those stats at Liverpool, doesn't he? He went up and scored a terrific it. And, <laughs> you know, we get, this is a world of stats now. We get stats like uh, how many passes you completed, how many were forward, how many were square, how many runs you made, what's the percentage of this, that and the other. The stats that I think tell stories above all others are the stats for this attacking players. How many goals and how many assists? And you cannot get away from those figures. And mm -hmm. it's quite right. We love Miggy. He's a lovely character. He plays with a smile on his face. He's relentless and he's trying. He'll run all day. Bottom line, one goal, no assists. The goal might have been a worldie, but that doesn't get you any, any extra points whatsoever. And if you are a forward player, in the old days, if you go way back beyond Mal in the 50s in Jackie Milburn, when sides played 2 3 5, was the, was the formation of every team two full backs, three half backs, five forwards? Then you could spread the load somewhat over five people. But if you play with one centre forward instead of two, and two wide players, three people in attack, they have got to get. Their, their fair share of goals and whether we like it or not whether we're being harsh on good lads or not whether they're great triers or not Almiron's got one goal and Chris Wood's got two goals and I'm sorry those figures are nowhere near enough if we are going to get to the next step we are in a situation where Callum Wilson come back as a sub at Man City, hadn't played for three months, three months, and he's still Newcastle's top scorer with a measly six goals. Mm. What mm. does that tell you what our problem is, our major problem? John, I, mean, I, I, and, I, I and John Tudor, for example, we would be so embarrassed about that. We wouldn't want to be showing our face in public, for heaven's sake. It's, oh, uh, the, it the, the, the it is an embarrassment. And, and therefore, we have to look at the situation, Mal, whereby we have currently two centre-forwards. I'm forgetting Gale because the last two managers have forgotten yeah. Gale, so we, yes. we can't bring him into the equation. He's yesterday's news, yes. big time. But Eddie Howe has gone on to explain the way he sees Newcastle developing in terms of tactics tactically how the player etc etc quite intriguing to see this week and quite eye-opening because he said he will not play with two strikers the, the the way that the game used to be played because of the holes that it leaves behind the two strikers that could be exploited mm -hmm. in the modern game forget whether that's agreed with or not but it's written in stone because that's the way this manager is going to play so you're going to play with one center forward We've got two at the moment competing for that position, Callum Wilson and Chris Wood. And there's a huge question mark against both. Chris Wood, 
two goals in 16 games, one of which is a penalty. Callum Wilson has, in his three seasons, he's been at Newcastle United, missed three months of each season. Each time he's been here, injuries has prevented him from yeah. playing for three months in his season. That is massive. You cannot rely, however good he is, on a guy that's going to miss three months of the season. Um, so next season, both those have got to be vying for the bench to, to be the backup striker, if you're only playing one striker, to the new man. But there's got to be a new man. You can't have a top goal scorer. I mean, the odds are that unless Callum Wilson scores in the next two games himself, the odds are that we're going to end up with a top scorer this season with six goals. We're certainly going to end up with a top scorer this season. It's not in double figures unless yeah. Callum Winslow scores twice against Arsenal and twice against Burnley. Um, and that's it cries out for improvement. It's, it's a must, an absolute must. Yeah, 100%. Great questions again. Keep them coming in. You know where to uh, to post them. And uh, we will try and get to as many as we can uh, throughout. Uh, John, any news on the uh, pre-season tour? It seems very much like it's going to be America. Have you heard anything, John? Just that. Just that. I mean, it's it's going to be long haul. And it's going to be flag-waving. And it's going to be earning a few quid. Um, which is fine which is fine and um, as long as it's going to include a centre forward a centre half a midfield player and a goalkeeper as well and, that, and, Roger, and Rod, Roger's asking any sponsors or more clarification yet shirts ground merchandise we've, we've heard bits about the training ground being approved John but is it a little bit early for that do you expect we we'll start probably getting some news about this at the end of the yes, season yes it is yes it is we, we have heard about the training ground improved the academy and my job, it, it, it's needed, isn't it? I mean, dear, oh dear, oh dear. And, you know, the new owners have come in and there's been so much to do. There's not enough hours in the day for them. They, they had to <clears throat> find a new manager, find a new director of football, find a new chairman, find new players in January that's capable of keeping us up find new players in the summer that's capable of taking us the next step. And that is without looking at what needs doing in the ground, what needs doing with the academy, what needs doing with sponsors, etc. It has been massive. And there's not enough hours in a day. And we've all got to realise that it's going to be step by step by step. And that number one, in all the thinking in the list of priorities, has got to be the team. Because you can have the greatest thing behind the scene, but if your team takes you down, it's all been for naught. So you start with the team, you go second, and they can run simultaneously, but there's so much to be done. There's not enough time to do it all in. We're, we're so anxious. But at least we're there and it's getting done and it's, it's underway. We forget the short space of time we've had with the new owners, with the new manager, and with the new players, you know, it is it it seems like a lifetime and it's a matter of weeks, months at the at the most since we launched everything in January with the signings and the upturning results. And we're only talking about being in early May now. It, it's quite phenomenal. And long may it continue because it needs to continue. Yeah, certainly does. Uh, BT says, anyhow, doesn't want to play with two strikers up front. He thinks that this format is long past, so three across the front uh, is the way forward. Lots of chat going on there, which is fantastic. Um, Merseyside Mags, good evening, says, evening, Steve, Supermac and John. Question for you all. Do you think Eddie Howe will get manager of the season for his achievements? Malcolm, um, Pep Guardiola and uh, Jurgen Klopp, you would imagine, are going to be hefty favourites again for, for what they've done this season, depending on who wins the league, of course. I mean, Liverpool have still got a, a slight outside chance of, of winning, you know, possibly four trophies. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah. Chelsea, of course, um, you know, manager has, has petered off. Arteta is not, not really in the in the running, I wouldn't think. So, Eddie Howe, I would imagine, is going to be in the mix only because of what he's actually achieved in, in his short spell at the, at the club, you know, for like turning the club's sure. fortunes but, around. So, what do you think? Well, per personally, I, 
I think the, the, the abs absolutely outstanding managerial performance um, is to keep a club in, in four tournaments with, with, with only two league games to go, um, other games in the other tournaments, obviously. Um, but they're in with a shout for four. I think that is absolutely phenomenal. Eddie Howe had one sole job to do, and that was get Newcastle safe. He did it. Well done, him. But I think that um, what Klopp has achieved at Liverpool, it, um, it, it, it outshines even uh, Pep Guardiola. Um, and, and it looks like Man City will take the, uh, uh, take the league title. Um, but it leaves Liverpool with three other options for trophies. And, uh, and that is amazing um, a, a feat. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I totally understand and I expect it to be Klopp, not to be Pep, because, he, I mean, he was in the four same trophies as Liverpool mm. and he's, he's going to win one of them. And it's arguable whether it's the most important one. Most people would say the Champions League was the most important one. Mm. And it, it will go to Klopp. But you know what? I'm, I'm sick of it going. Mm. I mean, you can make a case for the last four years in for the next four years, if who's going to get it between Pep and Klopp, because um, you know that's the way it is, season after season. Yeah. And I know that I think Klopp is already an absolute nailed on, certainly for it. But you know what? Let's not forget what Eddie Howe's done, because I've just mentioned to you that this Newcastle are 130 years old now. Never in our history, or not just us, but in the history of top flight football, has a side stayed up after not winning a game in the mm. first 14. And he's achieved that. That yeah. is a miracle in itself. And we were sure. further down. I look at what Man City have done. They're about to win their fourth title in five years. I look at what Liverpool have done, as Miles said, in for all four with two games to go. And I think we'll probably, they've already won the League Cup, they'll probably win the FA Cup and the European Cup, miss out on the league. So they'll get three out of four. But both what Klopp's done at Liverpool and what Pep's mm -hmm. done at Manchester City is hugely, hugely outstanding. But it's been a work in progress over a few seasons to get in what's what we want to do desperately. This has been a work in process at Newcastle over a few weeks. Not a yes, few seasons, yes. a few weeks. And for me, hugely biased as I am, and of course I've got to admit that, what Howe's done at Newcastle is absolutely phenomenal. Because mm -hmm. I tell you what, not just when last year ended, I remember sitting with Malcolm watching Newcastle play Cambridge in the oh. FA Cup and getting beat at home by a League One side and we were second bottom of the league in January. If this sure, and if and if we if we had been neutral, John, if we'd been neutral and watched that game, we would have said the premiership side was Cambridge. Oh, it, it was horrendous. And I mean yeah. there wasn't Newcastle were so pathetic. There wasn't any hope uh, at that stage for Newcastle. And even when we got the new guys up, it seemed like there was too much catch-up. We were going to run out of games before mm. we got the points. It's been phenomenal. I will yeah. give it to how I'm far too biased. Uh, biased. <laughs> the country, he'll give it to Klopp. No danger. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good question. But, uh, good good question. Uh, Eddie Howe, by heavens, he, he, he has done a, an absolutely remarkable job. Oh. Um, and And... It, well, he's he, he's clearly set a record that's going to be his for a very long time, I think. Yeah. And just think about it, Malcolm. If the start, we were on and you were on about Newcastle's record, mm. there was only Liverpool that gained more points in 2022, just mm. before we played Liverpool and Man City. Even now, there's only Liverpool and Man City got more. If this, with the new players and the new manager, if this... 2022 would be in the beginning of the season instead of halfway through, we would be in competition to get into Europe. Uh, you know, if that had been the start of the season rather than the second half of the season, I mean, the, the, the changeover has been nothing short of sensational. 
uh, and well done them. And that's why I'll go back to the point I made earlier. Please don't let us finish with four defeats. After all that yeah. wonderful thing, yeah, let us absolutely. get results against Arsenal and against Burnley so we'll finish with a little flourish. The manager, the fans, the owners and the players that have brought this turnaround deserve better than finishing with four defeats. Mm -hmm. Let's make certain that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people ask about financial fair play. Albert Mooney, good evening. Uh, Albert, always a great provider of entertainment on a Friday night on the Amigos. Uh, Eddie's mentioned financial fair play today. Am I right to think that this will be boosted by sponsorship and naming rights? And Mark Flicker says, hi, lads. Uh, how much can Newcastle actually spend in the summer without affecting financial fair play? So a bit of confusion over all of that, Mal. It's, uh, it's you know, it, it does have your head scratching a little bit, but... My mindset well, it, on this is always it been, like Ashley spent absolutely nothing in 40 because, years. We've got a bit of money to spend. Well, do you guys think that it's ever been properly explained by the footballing authorities? Uh, not, pub not publicly. I think it, it never it has, has been, been explained to the clubs. I think yes. it's been explained to the clubs. I think sure. Newcastle well, we don't, we don't really are. know quite but how we it don't. works. No, we you know, don't. For, for example, um, Going into the January transfer window, Newcastle had spending power of just under two hundred million pounds. They spent just under a hundred million, so they had over a hundred million still to spend. Now, does that get carried over and they're given a new fresh amount come this summer leading into a new season? I mean I don't know. Everything, everything that the new owners have told us is that the restrictions, forgetting about how they work out the mechanics of them, the restrictions will uh, literally restrict what they can do this summer. It, it's a percentage of the money you get in, the money you're allowed, therefore, to give out, etc. Mm -hmm. And the way around it, the only way around it, apart from having an nest egg which looks like being under 100 mil, is... You can top it up with any money that comes into the club, i.e. you sell Almiran for 20 mil, mm -hmm. if anybody mm -hmm. did that. You right. sell Gale for X number of mil. You sell Lascelles for X number of mil. All that can go into your transfer pot to top it up from what the owners put in to allow you to spend. So, in other words, Newcastle don't just have to clear the decks down and get rid of people on free transfers like yeah. Hendrick or, or for peanuts like Hendrick and, and, and everybody else, um, the goalkeepers, etc., etc. They, they have got to get some decent money back, which is going to only be represented, you'd think, guys, by selling some people like Almirin Lascelles Gale. Yeah, uh, you know, did my would. sorry? Would what you're going to get your 25 million back? I don't think so. No, <laughs> you might get, get something back, things. but you know, because I don't think they'll do that. But I know where you're coming from. Yeah, I know where you're coming from. I don't well, think he's Deadwood, do isn't he? Hmm? He's Deadwood. No, he's Chris Wood. Uh, no, I, I think, I think, <laughs> I think, I think the biggest advantage is Cartmel over everything else is that at least he can stay fit for twelve months, which Wilson can't. Um, so you know, yeah. you have a backup. With you get rid of Wood, Wilson's your backup on the day. What a cork and backup! Then he does three months out. And Wood's gone, and you're playing false number nines, and you're dusting mm. down the Saint and yeah. trying to get them run through the middle again. Um, it's going to be interesting. I don't think there would be a great value on uh, this, isn't being too harsh, but I don't think there'd be a great value on Chris Wood in the transfer. No, I don't think they I don't would. Don't think they would ma I think they'll make as much on Gale for sure. to a championship but, side than they would. Yeah, they, but you mentioned uh, Almiron, uh, they sell maybe some maximum. I think the best thing would be to let him move on. Uh, we've got we've got we've got a lot to talk about, and you know we, we are going to yeah. do some special summer shows where Gibbo and Malcolm are going to be looking you know, back I'm, at Malcolm's career. But we're going to chat a little bit about transfers on those shows. And I tell you what, the, mm -hmm. the one before we we'll, we'll go to the ad break, 
long staff, Malcolm. You have been, um, you know, North Shields president for quite some time now. You meet the long, you, yeah. you've met the long staffs. So you know them well. I, um, interesting story yeah, broke this week. Well. Long staff was going to knock back a transfer, uh, knock back a, a, a contract, and was going to leave the club. But you know, is, you know, can you see that happening? Is it, is it time for the long staffs to move on? Do you think they would benefit more from from leaving Newcastle now, or should they should they have the opportunity to to try and carve a career out on Tyneside? Um. I have, I, I would have argued in the in the opposite direction about Sean Longstaff and indeed about Matty um, three months back, but I'm now of the opinion that Newcastle have got to set their levels so high that I think that there is a huge number of players within Newcastle who have got to look to move on over the next couple of years. And I think that, uh, sadly, I think the long staffs are, are in that um, in that crowd of players. But um, it, it, it's, it's, it's all very well buying Bruno in and he looks and he looks a different class player, but he should be the norm, not the outstanding player. And, and so uh, it, it's it's going to be uh, it, it it's putting the pressure on the people dealing in the transfer market, but they should be thinking Bruno. I've got to get somebody as good as or better than Bruno, and that's the standard that Newcastle United must be looking at if they are going to achieve what the new owners. Um, are looking to do over over the coming years and so i think there is the the vast majority of the playing staff will will be moving on over the next two or three seasons and if i if i were one of the long staffs i would be looking at this situation and saying right the most important thing for me is to forge my career not that of anybody else uh, um, and and get get to a club at the at the level that i can make a success of myself i don't think that either of the long staffs can make a true success of themselves at newcastle they can but they would be able to do it elsewhere it might even be that um that perhaps they drop a division they can always come back up but sometimes it's it, it, it it's it's good for young players to drop a division um and play in the championship for a, for a season or two and then you, you if, if you've really improved your game you'll you'll come back up uh, without any trouble what's your thoughts on that john yeah um i totally follow what miles on about and um, the biggest answer to it is it doesn't matter what we think it matters what how thinks and eddie how in the short term will attempt to keep sean longstaff i.e the short term be next season i do agree with malcolm's point that long term you you can't see him making enough improvement quick enough to to be dominant in a Newcastle situation. But I think Sean Longstaff will be here next season. Matty won't be. Um, uh, And then we've got to go from there. I mean, you know, Sean, bless him. I mean, all you need is to have to go and play up against, literally physically up against Kevin De Bruyne at Manchester City, as Sean Longstaff had to do last Mm -hmm. weekend. And you know that is guaranteed to put you back on the subs bench, isn't it? Apart, apart mm. from the fact that both Willock and Shelby aren't going to make Monday, so he, he'll probably stay in the team because who else can come into that midfield alongside Joe Linton and Bruno if Willock and Shelby can't? Uh, so he'll possibly stay in the team for the moment. Um, yeah. I think I, Matthew I've is, always thought, John, that that Shelby. It, it has always been a major problem for Sean Longstaff. Shelby has made it quite obvious what I've seen over this season that 
uh, when Sean is, is is there playing alongside of him, um, he is totally ignored by Shelby. Shelby wants to go and play it his way, and uh, uh, and he has he hasn't got the the patience nor the space to include somebody else in his game. I was going and to say, Malcolm, he's a selfish good. player. You could say that that is Shelby. It doesn't matter whether yeah. it's Longstaff or somebody else sure. next to him. When you've got a you youngster next way. to you and you've got the experience of Shelby, you talk them through it and what have you. I just see Shelby turning his back. Yeah, well, it's but, interesting. That something you've mentioned on many, many shows, and um, yeah, I've always, uh, I've always watched and, and learned from Malcolm's comments sometimes of players, and he's very, very, very. Uh, rarely wrong. Big thank you, of course, as always, to our sponsors, Spider Miner, worldwide coverage with the lads. They are the only cryptocurrency miner that can mine five different cryptocurrencies at the same time, whilst using virtually no energy and it's VPN protected. Buy yours now at www.miner.spidervpn.org. Thanks also to Scott and the lads at skipsandbins.com, telephone 0800 25 45 25 3, email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website www.skipsandbins.com, easy contract, free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks also to LG Family Funeral Directors, 0191 389 7245, and to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD Hemp and Cannabinoid Specialists, www.thehd.com. Thanks to qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls and Newcastle, and the guys who run our website, nufcmatters.com. And thanks to Kleekai, meet the new game over screen, drop into a Clear Run device near you. Available on Apple Store, Google Play, and Clearrun.game. Thanks to Media Arts for help with all the video uh, technology. And if you want to subscribe, hit the Newcastle Legends logo in the bottom right hand corner, and you can subscribe for free and hit the like button which is the little thumb under the video over 320 watching at the moment uh, if you can all hit that thumb up that would do us a big favor click share to share your social media drop into the comments box to speak to like-minded newcastle fans or to post a question we're also available as a podcast on itunes spotify and other podcast providers it's free to listen on there usually goes up 24 hours after the show finishes and if you want to become a member of the cult Put your smartphone over the QR code, takes you straight to the membership page. And uh, what do you get for your membership fee? Well, you get a cup, a scarf, a pen, and entry into the membership draw once a month. And if you subscribe to the channel, you just need to go to nufcmatters.com and John will post out a subscriber's uh, car window sticker for free. So just contact John at nufcmatters.com. Don't forget, we're big supporters of the food bank here. nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk is the website. The virtual match day bucket drop your money into their virtually 365 days of the year margaret and i will be at the dog and parrot uh, about half past five on monday and uh, we will also be doing an aftermatch show as well be slightly later of course with it being a late kickoff round about that past 10 mark i would say by the time mal and i get down there but uh, well worth coming along that is our final uh, talk-ins of the season at the dog and parrot it's been fantastic and i'm happy to say that the dog and parrot have asked me and Malcolm to go back next year so we must be doing something right and uh big thank you as well to mick Lowe's, uh, who has organized our end of season do and that is with uh, andy griffin at shira's bar Friday the 24th of June, tickets are £12, and uh, I will be doing uh, a little bit of fundraising that night uh, for St Bede's Hospice, who uh, looked after me mum in her final days, uh, that will be a, a little bit of a fundraiser as well, and uh, we'll be doing something hopefully tomorrow night, my brother is setting up a, a Just Given page, uh, so those of you who keep saying, how can we donate, would like to donate, something will not get to the funeral, or, or whatever, um, I hopefully will have a just given link tomorrow, which I'll uh, share on the Three Amigos show, and we will be able to share that. And you'll be able to give us some beats because we want to give it to the palliative care unit as opposed to the QE in general because the, uh, they looked after it in our last couple of days. If you want to enter the Shearer raffle, two ninety nine dollars a ticket. Uh, tickets are limited to 99 uh, Enter now at nufcmatters.com. And uh, you could be the proud owner, like Vince Smith in the chat, of a signed Alan Shearer ball. Uh, okay, uh, we've got about 20 minutes left. Lots of questions coming in. Um, we'll keep the answer, I guess, to this one fairly short. Andy Davies says... Would you take Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Malcolm, from Evan? 
Um, no, I think I think there's better to be had, to be honest. Um, Simple answer. Mm. Okay, John. Uh, it depends who else is a possibility. Uh, there's a pecking order. He's near the top of the pecking order. Ivan Tony's on the pecking order. Would you take Ivan Tony? I think Malcolm wouldn't because he said don't go back. Uh, and that would be going back, although the guy didn't play in the first team. I would hope that we would get a better striker than, than both those guys. Um, so, no. I mean, uh, I wouldn't. And we don't know that Everton would sell, of course. Um, but no, I would look for, I would be more ambitious than him. Okay, uh, next question from Rachel Lilly, one of our moderators. Mm. Do you think Elliot Anderson is ready for the Premiership or should he have at least half a season with a Championship club? Did well at Bristol, uh, great season, good stats, looks promising, Mal. Um, yeah. Are we going to go down the... The Wayne Rooney, Alan Shearer, Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler route and give him a chance and blood him now, or are we going to send him back out on loan? I'm well. I'm I'm not so sure um, at all. I uh, um, I thought I read a statement that came from the club where um, he he certainly wasn't going to play the, in any game at all in this latter part of this in this last few games of the season. Um, so that so you would you would have thought with with then being no relegation issue, at least pop him in. You know, um, whether it's whether it's Arsenal or, or Burnley, you know, let him play at St James Park. And I think there was the time just to see. You know, I think there's technical reasons why that's difficult, Malcolm. Without knowing is that because exactly of his loan, job? getting getting him, you know, getting him re-registered, etc., etc. What they have said is that he will play pre-season. Uh, okay. He'll play pre-season for Newcastle, and then they'll make a decision on him whether to put him straight in right. the first team squad or send him out to gain more experience higher up. Very the sensible. Than League Two. Um, yeah. I Very think sensible he'll probably indeed. end up with. I mean, I would. I would take a chance. I'm biased. I know his granddad, and I. I think the kid's got wonderful possibilities, probabilities, and. Um, Yes, he's way above League Two uh, class. I mean, yeah, uh, but Joey Barton, Barton thought the world well, of it, didn't he? Yeah, I, not off. He got him promoted when he would have yeah. had no flipping chance to start. Yes. He's got a good right to, to think the world of him because he was one of the main. It's a team game. It's more than one man, but he was the main man, and I thought it was wonderful that he got the seventh goal that took them up uh, in that ridiculous mm. game with Skunto because that was, and he deserved that. He is way above League Two class. Uh, Barton's trying to keep him because it'll be League One. I think he's got it. If he's going out to gain more experience, and I would follow that, he's got to go in the Championship and nothing lower than the Championship because yes. he's too much quality for League One and League Two. It's got to be the Championship or stay with Newcastle uh, and keep blooding them into the side. But if you're going to give him next to no games at Newcastle, get him out for a season, or at least get him out till Christmas. You yeah. can do half a season's loan, and, and if he's pulling up trees wherever he is in the Championship, like he did for Barton at Bristol, then you bring him back and play him in the second half of the season. Sure, middle like think, struggle for I goals all a, season. I think he's a big player for the future, Malcolm. Yes, absolutely. Um, what, I, what I would say is, though, um, that that with it with a youngster, a, a, such a, a, a great young talent, you don't rush them. You you, you put them in, and I uh, and um, in, in my time, and I'm, I'm as it so happens that tomorrow night I'm uh, um, I'm at a, a, a or rather tomorrow lunchtime I'm at a function down in London um, that's a Fulham football club function. Um, of the time when I was managing there and Paul Parker's going to be there. I played Paul Parker when, um, when he was just turned 17 and I put him in, you know, Wayne Rooney, he was, he played when he was 16. You, you, you get exceptions like this. Um, but I, uh, um, Paul Parker, he had, a, he had this mentality that I knew he was going to survive. 
And what you don't want to do is crush a youngster. It's, it's damaging in the long term. And so it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see when Eddie Howe feels that it is right to put this lad into the first team and blood him. And, uh, and it, it needs very careful thought um, and, and a lot of confidence with everybody. The player's got to have confidence. The manager's got to have confidence. All, all the players, teammates, they've got to have the confidence in him. And, uh, uh, and, and I would hope that, um, that they give him all the support possible when he does play. And I'm going to be mightily uh, intrigued um, to, to just sit and watch and, and see how he does. I'm so looking forward to uh, seeing him play. But don't rush him. Never rush a youngster. Yeah, exactly. It's a good good, good, good point. Uh, Paul Oxley, a uh, couple of people mentioned a meat row. Uh, it's his question on Malcolm. Mitrovic looks like he's matured for me. Has it had, he's had an outstanding season, 43 goals. Do you think he'll get a decent return in the Premier League next season? No. He's a championship player. Correct. That's my and, that, uh, and I agree with that. Big John, you're nodding yeah. your head. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think he will. Uh, there's people that are wonderful championship players. Uh, Ned Kelly, that was at Newcastle, is a big example of somebody mm -hmm. that jumps out who could score a barrel or the, I mean, I think he, he scored what he scored a hat trick when we. Uh, when we came up, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with Andy Cole and then never kicked the ball for us in the top division. And most managers went down that route with him, that he was a terrific championship player, but not uh, not a Premier League player. I mm -hmm. mean, maybe Mitrovic will make his suit our words, but I don't think he will. And I don't think he'll score a pile of goals. He's not the quickest lad. You don't, know, you don't have to be uh, quick, but it's all for help. Um, you don't have to be quick. Shearer wasn't quick, but Shearer was unique. And I don't think oh, Mitrovic's in yeah. that category or anything like it. No, I don't think he's going to score. And let's remember that Fulham in the Championship made 20 chances a game. Do you mm -hmm. think they'll make that in the Premier League when they go to Liverpool and Man City and Arsenal and Spurs and Newcastle United, may I say? Uh, do you do you think they're going to make as many chances for Mitrovic to be able to feed off? Um, I wish him well, the lad, but I, no, I don't think he's a top no, and top def defender. Defenders are the defenders are much cleverer uh, um, than, than than those in the Championship, in the, uh, those in the Premier, and they 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 will be looking to nick in all the time with Mitrovic. Um, and as you say, he's not the quickest. Um, sometimes he wants to he wants to take his time a little bit too much on the ball, and uh, and defenders will catch him out. And you, you've got you've got to be smart, not smug. And Mitrovic for me is way too smug. Yeah, uh, I will wager Mitrovic will score more than Wood, says Michael Kelly. I'm not commenting on that because it, it oh. looks as if I've got a whip in a chair. Well, who knows? Uh, um, uh, um, I think. I think By the I, way, I think he will. I express my feelings uh, about Wood. He, you know, I hear that he's he's a lovely lad. Great. Um, you know, and I'm, and this is nothing personal. It is just purely about his performances um, in the Newcastle side as a centre forward. Um, that um, I, I don't think he does himself any real favours, and, and that suggests to me that really that he's out of his league. So I'm saying that Mitrovic will find himself out of out of um, his league. Wood will find himself out of his as well next season. Okay, good stuff. Steve Middlemas says, do you think the expectations of the fans will be unrealistic for signings if we don't have to fight relegation and a cup run would be a huge step forward? Are we going to have unrealistic fans, Mal? Is that part and parcel of being a, a rich club? Well, uh, um, I, I don't think it's going to be unrealistic. Um, we, know, we know who own Newcastle United now and we know that... that there is uh, um, a lot of money be, that, that they will put into um, bringing the right players in. 
the the most vital thing is making that selection process and bringing in the right players um that uh, um you know where and and i and this is where i um i find myself scratching my head literally when i look back at last january and i think how on earth did that did anybody say or would it be the fella we're we're bringing in at right back um an england international uh and we're, we're looking to bring in this fabulous brazilian midfield player um and and then in the middle of that we're buying a fella who was so incredibly overpriced because he was still on contract and it was in that was the 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 fee that uh, he would be sold on for whilst he was on contract with Burnley. And I think, who on earth sanctioned that? Who on earth even thought that that fella who has got no track record um, on a serious goal scoring basis, um, except for New Zealand, but then if you have a look at the kind of opposition, it's Samoa that they play against and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and so, um, obviously, there's, there's been a, a bit of change in, in, in how they think about it when you start to bring in the likes of Bruno. But it's how you, and I think I said this earlier in the programme, but it's how you view where, where the average standard lies. Um, is it at Woods level and we have a couple of really outstanding players way better? Or do you say, no, that uh, um, that, that, that level that we're after is Bruno. We want him to be the average player in the side that because we're going to have uh, um, eight, nine, ten players who can match him ability-wise and in the, in the thinking process of playing a game of football um and uh, and and so that just leaves wood so way out of the picture um it is untrue and, and so my big my big hope malcolm is that you know i'm following what you're saying but i think that our buying policy in january was excellent to, to, for the first stepping stones we make to be Trippier, to be Bruno, to be Target, to be Target, Burn, yeah, it yeah. Is, it is terrific and needs must with Wood who come in and did the job that the hand of him and was without scoring the goals was part of the nine match run, our unbeaten run. We did well. We bought good characters and good players in the main in January. So I'm, I'm, it is all about what we do this summer that will determine that we make the next step immediately or we take a step backwards. But I've got good hope and good vibes that we will go into the market cleverly and do well again. We've yes. got you. Um, but I've got a feeling that we will do. In in that case, then then Wood is a lesson to be learned from. I think Wood was I think Wood was the only one available. And I think when you look at the nine game unbeaten run that we went into, which really did assist us in, you know, staying up. Um, he played an integral part of that. And the point that somebody made earlier as well is that we took a striker who, away from a relegation rival who essentially, you know knocked in anything from 10 to 12 goals for them on a yes. regular basis although he hadn't had a great start this season so but i agree as well on the flip side of that that you know look at the chance i know it's man city but look at the chance he missed against man city the cross was in it was on his head should have scored that and we've sure. seen too much nope. we've seen too much of that from him no right. question there's but, a nice the thing, thing there from paul english that was on screen there saying wood was bought to relegate Burnley, Burnley, and I know yeah. the theory there. But what about, here's a scenario, on the last day of the season, Wood scores our winner and does relegate Burnley. It could happen. It could happen. Yeah. But it could, it could happen. The thing, is, the, could happen. 
But Burnley, they, they sort of made out that they were all irate and really upset a, a, about Newcastle pinching wood and paying the 25 million that was in his contract to to um, to uh, for the release clause. Um, but Burnley went out and for and for for, for uh, a fraction of that money bought a player who was sco who scored more goals than Wood. Yeah, he's all bliss and all, mate. Mine, uh, yes, he's not. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But he, yeah, but know, he scores more point. goals than Wood. I know the point. Yeah, I, I, would, the point. I wouldn't want to see him walk through St James's Park gates. No, but, no, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> But, is Shaw a uh, short part of the long term future? Is, um, or share what you know, however you pronounce it. And is Andrew Kelly's just asking, is he part of the long term future? He's signed a new deal now. Oh, he signed a new deal, has he? He has, yeah. Um, uh, if he's signed, Lascelles has got to go because the two of them just cannot play together. Fernandez Shall will go as well. Hmm? Fernandez Sorry? will go as well. Fernandez. Yeah. Yeah, he yes. was. I think he Fernandez. Was. And Lascelles, now, all, Lascelles now, is too much. Lascelles isn't a good partner for Burn when Shaw's out because no, he's, and he's too not much a good like, partner for Shaw. He's, he's a, but he's a poor man's Burn, and he, he's a left side player, etc. Et They're too similar to be partners. While Burn's the superior of the two, they're too similar to be partners. So. You know, he would only be the understudy for Burn. Can Dummett do that? Can mm -hmm. Shaw would be the the one to be alongside alongside Burn. But next season, I suspect that we will have a new centre half playing alongside Burn, and Shaw will be the guy on the bench to come on, mm -hmm. which puts Lascelles even further down the pecking Quite order. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I think that I think one thing that is required is pace. They need a new man to come in, play with Burn, who and, and be quick. And, and that man has got to be quick. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Colin Todd yeah. type player. Lots of people are agreeing. Donald Bain, uh, Baines is one of them. Lascelles needs to move on, and Forrest seems to be a team that be, he keeps getting linked with. Tom's asking about the kit. Tom will feature that on the Amigos tomorrow. Um, I haven't had time to uh, obtain the photograph, and I want to do that that particular thing justice. Do you think the ladies' team will play uh, more games at St James's Park, Mal? Great turnout um, for for that oh, particular it, match. That, and, that was amazing. Yes, I, but I re I really don't know. Um, I, I I don't. Know I think the, I I think the they will. I think Amanda, Amanda's keen on that. They're not going to yeah. play all their home games at St James's Park, no. of course not. But I think they'll dip in two or three times. But it's a record gate, isn't it, John? For yes, I, yeah. Uh, it was a not just at St James in, Park, I mean, but it was but for the women's no, for, league for women's football. You've got yeah. to bear in mind, Mal, this wasn't the women's super league, this was mm -hmm. divisions down. Yes. You know, Newcastle on in the top women's league. So to get that sort of attendance for mm -hmm. for games down the, the, the women's pyramid is nothing short of staggering. But then Newcastle yes. fans are nothing short of staggering. Well, absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally agree yeah. on that. Fantastic show, great interaction with the chat tonight, over 320 watching all the time as well. Thank you to all the moderators, doing a cracking job as always. And uh, as always, Mal and John, uh, in a difficult week for me, uh, thanks for making it as faultless and as easy as possible. Uh, another lovely tribute uh, to me, Mal, and uh, we will keep battling on. But uh, look forward to seeing you on Monday, Mal, and uh, look forward to joining you both next Thursday uh, back on NUFC Matters. Take care, lads. All right, All the best, guys. Do take care. Have a good weekend, everyone.